So I just wanted to show you a few different types of examples of how delayed birth records can help you um, with information that was collected at the time the registration was made. So uh, this first example actually involves three different delayed birth records and they have to do with three of six children, um, technically four of them, uh, who I lost in 1909 after their mother died. And so this first one is for William Frederick Zimmerman. And sometimes it will have a delayed birth certificate notation at the top. This one has a stamp that says DS. I'm assuming that this is delayed, maybe series or something, because they are actually, these particular uh, certificates are in their own um, record set. They're not intermingled with the other um, birth certificates from this time period uh, for Cook County. So let me zoom in a little bit. And I can tell you that the majority of the information that is contained here is in fact accurate according to other records I have for William. But I'm not really concerned with that. I want to go down here because I can see here that in this particular case, um, this was uh, certified uh, by uh, this uh, notary public and the person who provided the information um, by affidavit was Lena Promince. And when I saw that, I thought, who the heck is that person? And then I saw that the, she's related to this person as a first cousin. And I thought, okay, well, who the heck is she? I have no idea who she is. And after digging a little bit, I determined that Lena was uh, Evelyn Mulski, the daughter of Caroline Hanfler. And Caroline, who was also known as Lena, was the sister of William's mother, Augusta, and my second great-grandmother, Minnie. So this actually led to more information um, by tracing this first cousin. I was able to find another a sibling of Augusta and Minnie because I didn't know the entire family makeup and it helped me actually confirm that records I had found across the pond in Germany were in fact for the correct family. But we now have information on William. We know it's very hard to read but it's uh, this was uh, registered on May 20-something 1942 um, and he was born in 1893. So, but I now know that he was living in 1942 when he applied for this delayed birth certificate because I really had no idea what happened to him after 1909. So um, let me go to a sibling of his. So this one is for Elsie, his sister, William's sister. And again, this information is pretty accurate based on other records that I have for Elsie. Again, it's another one that's stamped as DS, which I, again, assume is like delayed series, I'm guessing. Um, but I'm going to go down here. And uh, so I know that on May 8th, 1942, she was living. Elsie was living. She applied for this delayed registration. So now I know the whereabouts of two people, two of the siblings, two out of the six children. One of them had died very early, so she, she, I really was down to five, not knowing what happened to the fate of the five. But anyways, uh, down here, um, this affidavit was given by Miss Katie Zimmerman Helty. I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but it's his sister, and he had a sister named Catherine also went by Katie. So this is his sister. Now I have or uh, Williams and Elsie's sister. <laughs> I forgot we're on Elsie. But anyways, I have Katie now. I have a married name for her and I have her at a particular address in a Chicago suburb 
in 1942. So this um, is quite helpful because now not only do I know what happened to William or at least he was living in 1942 I also know that Elsie was living in 1942 and I know that Katie was living in 1942 great what about one of the other siblings so here I have Mary and again the information on the birth is pretty accurate although this I catch right off the bat as uh, the the father being born in Bavaria and the mother being born in Bremen. I'm not sure about the father, but I know that the mother was not born in Bremen. So that is wrong. Um, but anyways, uh, down here, I see that William, uh, the brother, older, is the one who um, did the affidavit for this particular one. And this was in 1940. And you'll notice he was living in New York City in 1940. So I now know William was living in New York City in 1940. He was living somewhere in 1942 when he applied for his own delayed registration. I now know that Mary is alive and well in 1940. I know that Elsie was alive and well in 1942, as was Katie. So four out of the remaining five children, I now know um, some additional clues for them. It really didn't tell me a whole lot about their birth information because I already knew who the parents were. I already knew the dates of birth. I have baptisms. I have confirmation records. So. This didn't really help me a whole lot, but this, in this time period, was very helpful. So I want to show you another example. So this one is for a relative of mine. Her name is Ida. And again, this is a Cook County one, so it's got this stamp, this DS. And um, this one... Um, I can tell you is a little concerning because some of this information is accurate. I, they were living on Clorinda Street at the time she was born, so that's accurate. But uh, the date of birth is July 31st, 1891. And if I come over here and pull up her baptism record, she was born on August 9th, 1891 and then baptized on the 16th, so about a week or so later. So, mm, not really sure how reliable this birth date is. I'd be, I'd be more willing to go with the August date instead of the July date, but who knows. Um, and then I also know that the birthplace of the parents is in no way, shape, or form Alsace-Lorraine, uh, but that's neither here nor there. So down here at the bottom, let's look and see what's going on. So. Uh, Ida filed this while she was living in Walworth County, Wisconsin in 1942. Interesting. Um, I know she was back and forth across the border um, between Walworth and uh, McHenry County, so that didn't really surprise me, but at least I know where she was in 1942. And then I can see here that Alvina Trapp, who was an aunt, was the person who provided the affidavit. So I already knew that Alvina Trapp was her aunt, my great-great-grandmother's sister. I already knew that. Uh, I did not previously know this particular address, this 1917 North Keeler Avenue. I wasn't aware of this address, so this was new information. And quite frankly, I didn't know what happened to Alvina uh, after the 1940 census. Um, I have since learned that she died in 1959, but... At the time, this was actually very helpful because I knew she was still living in 1942. So, so these are all kind of my stories, and they're all kind of you know focused on Cook County, which again they do have these um, set aside; they're not intermingled. So I want to show you some examples of some others that are not my family, but I found to be very interesting. So this. 
first one is actually from Seneca County, Ohio, and they actually had a very uh, in-depth process. I'm sure the others probably did too, but all that was recorded was what you saw um, very briefly who provided some information. They didn't get into a whole lot of details, but in this one, this literally has pages of information. So this first one here, you, on this first page is the application to register birth or correct birth record. And these are all probate court records. So you have here Florence Swinehart. She provides her date of birth, the, that she was legitimate. Uh, she was born in at uh, Watson Station. Then she gives the father's full name information, mother's full name and information, etc. And uh, she provides her address. Uh, she's now living in uh, California, Los Angeles, California. Um, and great, you think that's it, but really it's not. Because if you go to the next page. So this is the back side of the page that we were just looking at. So we have supporting affidavit of attendant at birth and they do not have one because they probably could not find one. So they then move on to the supporting affidavit of a relative or non-relative. And there are there's number one, uh, the state of California, LA, and it's her father. So, okay, great. So you come over here and what else do we have? So the commission to take deposition. So this, here is um, Milton's uh, affidavit, basically, and he goes through and he answers a bunch of questions, which we'll see on the next page. So pages, literally pages of information. So he uh, is providing all of this information, uh, basically answering all the questions that would be filled out on the birth certificate. So he's got uh, your full name and address. He's the father of the applicant. Um, what was the place of birth? Ohio, Seneca County, and Tiffin. Uh, born in private dwelling at Watson Station. No street address. I mean, how detailed is that? You wouldn't even see that on a birth certificate in that day. It would just say Watson Station. Um, and it goes on, where was the usual residence of applicant's mother at the time of birth of the applicant? Same thing. So all of these details that will then get entered into the um, uh, delayed birth certificate. So all these, all these things, all these things, it's fantastic. And we're not done. Flip the page. And then there's just some other information over here, nothing really major, but here we go. So this is a journal entry, uh, order for hearing if that was necessary. Um, and there's some information here, but then here is the birth certificate right here. So all that information that was provided has now been entered into this record here. So pretty cool stuff, right? Lots of information. So if you have anybody in Seneca County, uh, Ohio, I would definitely encourage you to look at these. And these are found in the probate court records. So I'm going to show you another example. This one is from uh, Castle County in North Carolina. And I'm going to zoom in here a little bit. And you can see that it's delayed certificate of birth registration. And the person was Joseph Henry Harrelson. He was born on April 9th, 1912. And it gives, you know, the where and all of that fun stuff. The mother, or the mother, the father. But here's the cool part, right? So this was registered in 1941. But look at all of this evidence. So this is an abstract of the evidence that was presented in order for him to get this uh, birth certificate issued. So we have a family Bible showing name and date of birth of Joseph, also showing name and date of birth of the mother, Cora Mills Allison. Okay, my first question is, where is that family Bible now? 
right? Then we've got certificate from superintendent of Castle County Schools showing that Joseph, age 18, attended Cobb Memorial High School during the school year 1930 to 1931. That he's white, son of Henry and Cora, and resided in Ruffin, North Carolina. I mean, you've got information about when he was in school, what the name of the school was. I'd be looking for school records. And then there's information about an insurance policy with Accidental Life Insurance Company in Raleigh, North Carolina. Not really sure if you'd be able to find records along the, along these lines, but you never know. <laughs> um, I personally haven't, but you never know. But look at all of that information that is gleaned just by this abstract, um, which provided information for them to go ahead and uh, um, issue the um, delayed birth certificate. So I've got two more. I know this one's really, really hard to read. I'm going to switch it to this way. Um, it's still very hard to read. We're going to zoom in here in a minute. But this one is from Kane County, Illinois. And this one is on a specific uh, form for delayed record of birth. So let me uh, zoom in here. This is for John Marvin Kastner, um, who was born in Batavia. And it has his uh, father's name, mother's name, um, and then the affidavit. It looks like he provided the information. Um, yep, John. Okay, and th these are the documents that he provided. I know it's really, really hard to see. I'm going to zoom in as best I can. I know it's very hard, but... First, it mentions a record of marriage of John M. Kastner and Pearl, I think it's Weiler, at Aurora, Illinois, King County on April 23rd, 1917. Bingo. If you didn't know that he married Pearl Weiler in Aurora in 1917, now you do. Um, and then over here, it just simply states that he was 23 years old at the time of that marriage and uh his birthplace was listed as Batavia, and his father was listed as Hiram, and his mother was Mary Flora. Uh, I can't really read that very well. So great, you have marriage information, you know exactly where to look. And then uh, there's an affidavit dated May 31st, 1957, made by older sister May Kastner Keck and living at 205 Keck Avenue in Aurora. So now you know he had a sister, if you didn't know. If you did know and didn't know that she married a Keck, now you know. You have her address in 1957. And then um, record of child's birth. Um, this is his child's birth. Um, she was born on January 9th, 1919. And it's just telling us that he was 24 years of age uh, when she was born in 1919. So if you didn't know she had that he had a child named Lorraine, now you do. Um, and you can find the information or that birth record because it gives you the date of birth, the date it was filed, their certificate number, and the volume and page number. So lots of goodies here. I know this one's really super hard to read. I don't know how I managed to read that, to be honest. So let's look at one more. This one's way better to look at. And uh, just a quick thing, if I didn't say this before, both of this one is also King County. It's in the, actually in the same series. It's just a few images apart. But I, I, I don't know if I mentioned earlier that uh, these particular records are actually intermingled with regular birth certificates. So let me go back to this one real quick. We know this one specifically said delayed record of birth. But if we go, that's another delayed Another delayed. Of course, I can't find one that. Uh, okay, so here's a regular certificate of birth. But you'll notice. So okay, the date of birth was 1894, and you'll notice down here that it was filed on in 1942. So this is um, a, technically a delayed. It's just not labeled as delayed. Some of these are. Um, 
just not finding. Oh, here we go. So this is a this is one that was actually um, he this person was born in 1984 and it was filed in 1894. So you can see that these are actually all intermingled with the original ones that were uh, done in 1894 and the delayed ones. Whenever they were filed, they got stuck in date in and in, in a date range. Um, so let me go back to this one. So here, here's one that does not say that it's delayed. It's not indicated in any way, shape, or form. The only reason you know this is because the date of birth was 1894. There is an affidavit uh, from the, the mother in this case, and it was filed in 1942. So that's your indication that it's delayed. Um, so always pay attention to that whenever you're looking at a series of birth certificates because it could be that it was delayed and it's just not blatantly obvious. <laughs> so in this case, um, I just wanted to point that particular idiosyncrasy out. And the nice thing is in this particular case that the mother was actually uh, alive when um, this was done in 1942 and we have an address for her and so that's pretty good if you didn't know that she was still living in 1942 now you do if you didn't know who his mother was you kind of have some uh, information here as well um, so I just wanted to kind of show you an array of different things. I mean, we have actual certificates. We have ones that say delayed, ones that don't say delayed, but I showed you how to determine whether or not they are or um, if they're actually uh, the quote-unquote originals that were filed at the time of the birth. I've showed you probate court records, all sorts of um, crazy things that are out there. So don't rule it out because the information here at the top, that birth event and the parents and where they lived and all that other stuff may or may not be accurate. Um, you'll have to find other sources to confirm that. But the great thing is, is you can get clues, you can get relationships, married names, the person was living in a particular time period, all this good stuff just from the affidavit or the, the clues like uh, this one that has, we have a family Bible somewhere, right? So I just wanted to share that with you. I think this is an often underutilized uh, resource. And I just wanted to point out that there are cases where there is a ton of information that can be very helpful in your research.